Level five, face to face with myself, the physics of any oneself. All darkness, except this one seemingly tiny point of light coming from this little metal bearing. I stare at it in amazement. What is this tiny little thing doing here? How lucky was I that I saw the light shining inside of it from what felt like an eternity away and in an entirely different space that I ever would have looked. In this ocean of darkness, this thick, powerful, endless, radioactive negativity, how can this be? The light was like a spark in an ocean of quicksand. I stare at this tiny little bearing floating there, thinking and evaluating. I begin to feel warmer and warmer as I get closer and closer. This thing is so tiny. Holy shit, I'm tiny too. I start to focus on myself a little in this new space and I start to feel microscopic. Time and space didn't exist, so without the perspective of scale, there's no way of knowing. I feel as small as a cell in an endless ocean of dark swirling swells of infinite dark energy. Good thing this light started to shine. The light starts to get brighter. What is it? Ball bearing? It starts to look like a star as I inch closer. I feel warmer and warmer gets brighter and brighter, radiating beauty. I try to focus my entire self, my entire being, every ounce of energy I had to recognize what I'm looking at, only to realize it's not a star or a bearing or a light. It looks like an eye with a tall flame for a pupil. The flame starts to grow ever larger. Wait, it's, it's not a flaming eye, it's, it's just a bubble transparent. It's a tiny bubble in this endless swamp beyond space-time. Then I realize, if the bubble is empty, then the light isn't coming from it. That means that the light must be coming from me. It's not an I. It's I. It's me. The light's my reflection. I'm pure light. Nothing but a source of pure energy. Wow, and in front of me was what appeared to be a bubble of pure matter. Almost like a mirror. Holy fuck. Pretty cool. And hot. If it wasn't for my little tiny light, my brightness, my integrity, my ambition, and unfathomable luck, I never could have found this. The light in the distance was my reflection. Wow. I love it. So I float there as a tiny little ball of light, thinking on for what felt like forever, about the chances of me finding this tiny little bubble of matter what felt like this infinite darkness full of dark and painful currents pushing and pulling me away, trying to drag me in every single direction except towards where I actually needed to go. I began to think that in any other situation, I would have never found this tiny, nearly invisible bubble floating in the middle of literally nowhere. It was so impossible, but it was every bit as real as the other half of my consciousness sitting on my couch, really, really, really wanting a cigarette after that stack of waffles. So I began to bask in my own light. It was beautiful. It was my honest, pure, elemental reflection. And then I got sucked into the bubble and everything turned to light. Yeah, I know. Level six, from light to dark to light again. Blinding light, all the darkness was gone. The only way to describe what it felt in that moment was the love of everything and everyone that has ever and will ever exist. Ever all at once. Inside was out, outside was in, all was one, one was all. I felt uh, the singularity, universal balance, equal parts energy and matter frozen in time, universal integrity. I bathed in the love, in the light, in energy in pure positivity. The sensation was like being submerged in bright, glowing, golden congratulations. It felt better than if I had gained all the respect of every living person on the planet today in an instant. It felt better than what I imagined every dream of mine coming true all at once would be like. More than if I were a famous movie star, rock star, sports star, comedian, model, etc. All at once, this was it. And then, boom, big bang, and slowly the darkness faded back in. But now, there are beautiful bubbles floating everywhere. My perspective became clearer. Whatever it was, it felt unbelievable. It was it. 
It was the beginning of a new universe, and I floated in and out, up and down, back and forth, through everywhere and everything, through the entire universe, for an eternity. All while I sat on the couch, and it lasted lucidly for three calendar days, but it felt like it could have been 33 billion light years. During that time, I cocooned myself for my loved ones so I could focus on this opportunity. I was watching life itself flash before my eyes. It was fucking beautiful and terrifying. And then, before my focus needed to return to apply what I learned, I saw my entire life flash before my eyes, but from a perspective greater than before. A clearer view from above. So I slowly reacclimatized over the next few weeks and months, with sunburns all over my body. In March, in Ontario, Canada, with hardly any direct sun exposure during those weeks. Only cosmic exposure. The colors, the sensations, the wonder, the experience, the reflection, forever. Level 7. From here to there, and back again. Whole. What is every religion, devout faith, spiritual teachings, prophets, and programs of guidance, other than different subjective points of view, all striving for the pursuit of security? So what if it was all an analogy, not scripture? No divinity, but symmetry, an allegory. What if it was quantum relativity? What if the pressure we face is that of our core principles? I rewound my past through this new prism of a greater perspective, and I saw where I continuously and stubbornly displayed a greater lack of it. All those years feeling insecure and making pressure-based choices that I didn't understand at the time, I didn't have the confidence needed to trust my own mind, so I let others make up my mind for me. I let the world in, tell me who I was, determine my value. I saw the ripples of my poor choices made mostly based on how I felt about myself, how my environment valued me based on their own fears, our society's weaknesses as much as my own. I witnessed myself getting older and finally starting to stand up to bullies. I watched from above and encouraged myself to stay strong. Every punch my younger self faced, each rejection, each misstep, an awful discouraging blow, or shallow, ignorant, superficial name I was called, was just another painful step to today. And that will be his greatest gift, I whispered to myself quietly enough that my younger self didn't hear. I was seeing everything. I visited and saved myself from a few of the worst of my nightmares, whispered to myself that it would all be fine one day and that it's all worth it. Because if it wasn't for every single moment of pain, every good and bad influence, there would have been nothing to learn from. Everyone else was a demonstration. Every negative was simply a positive waiting to be energized. This is Pandora's box, Atlantis, the Holy Grail. My nightmares made sense. Don't follow. Be bright. Hindsight is a prerequisite for insight and the only way to develop a sense of foresight. To see beyond the horizon, gain an ever brighter perspective, grow your objective point of view. Time and space are subjective, an objective perspective is beyond the clouds. I felt renewed purpose to share this experience. It felt like I was holding a flaming sword that was pulled from the stone. Common sense felt shallow, like it would never matter again. There is no such things as demons, only demonstrations of dark core principles of the environment. A bright expanding perspective of core principles are what matters. Nothing as superficial as money or social validation or fame could ever buy, what no industry could ever produce, something that not even time can prevent from enduring, where there is no entropy or decay, because time is not what I was told it was, merely what I was convinced it was, and now relativity has changed. And what has happened to me since, with the perspective I have gained, seeing beyond the horizon without my consent, seeing so far back that it propelled me forward, and vice versa, all at once in an instant, it has changed everything. Me, my world, my life, my sense of being. If any or all of my wishes came true, my dreams never would have. Karma isn't about luck or victimhood, it's not about being nice or doing nice things. Karma is misinterpreted. It's an understanding. It's about bravery few understand. What is the difference between crazy and brave? If the world was bright and warm, the inclusive free wonderland they portrayed to be, would bravery even be a thing? Would me coming forward with my story be brave? Is being open with my experience crazy? Or is the world shitty? 
is validation the price of admission and vice versa. Thankfully, none of that matters. Life is about having an objective perspective other than your own subjective view of the world, other than what is best for you and your family and the people who look and feel most like you do, who benefit from the same toxic behavior, choices, politics, false identity, and ignorant points of view, seeing for yourself who and what we all are. Good versus evil, happiness versus sadness, success versus failure, kind versus mean, rich versus poor, it's all based on time and place and is entirely subjective. What is good to or for you can be evil to or for someone else, and so on. So every time I laughed at a misogynist joke, I was actually encouraging it without knowing. Every time I looked the other way for any act or notion without integrity, or I didn't stand up for myself or anyone else, I perpetuated the same mistreatment on others. The less integrity I showed for my own sense of security, the more the negativity expanded, inside and out. People always have the same excuse in the end for every bad thing they've done, any year, any place, any faith, any race, any political view, any country, every single person from every walk of life throughout human history. It's always the same lines in the end. I did what I thought was right. I did what I was told. I did it for my family. Everyone around me made it feel like it was okay. I thought I couldn't make a difference. I was scared. I couldn't have known any better. It wasn't a big deal. Anytime, any place, all the same excuses, no matter the person. Just different values to an equation, with the same end, same incorrect point of view, just perpetuation, lack of brightness. The light will go out if there's not enough integrity, momentum, and correct trajectory to be able to traverse through all that darkness against all the darkest negative currents and forces within the ocean of physics against you, inside and out, conscious physics, such as the universe itself. You knew better as a bright child, innocent and impressionable. You just didn't know others didn't. You felt it, but you ignored it. And they convinced you. The demonstrations of dark principles, the pressure you felt to be more like them, it's the same story over and over. The only difference is time and place. Since the dawn of human existence, true integrity does not waver. Time simply reveals truth. Everything in this universe is objective, except a single point of view. The meaning of life isn't the pursuit of happiness or comfort or success or anything subjective or temporary. The secret is finding your own sense of brightness. Life is about the pursuit of perspective, the universal prerequisite to all life, balance. But for there to be balance, there has to be pressure. Pressure is a gift, one that builds and defines our perspectives, our sense of brightness, integrity, direction, momentum, like a compass that everyone can use as their own personal and instinctual measurement device. I have never been so humbled. I was no different than anyone else. It was just the right time and place and circumstance slash pressure for my compass or antenna to point to the exact right place to connect to this evolutionary perspective. The only pressure left is to stand up to tell this world, you're wrong, rise and shine. The only difference between any two people that have ever lived is their perspective based on their shallow subjective points of view, skewed by their specific shallow environments and the survival skills they develop to adapt to the world around them. Every person's path is like a radio frequency changing with each step, like a combination. I finally understand expression, art, music, the hero's journey, structure, energy, matter, math, zombie movies. This is the awakening people have tried to express in art. It's not about me, not Jesus, God, nothing subjective, only objective. So much focus on the who and the how that we forget about the why, the purpose, the reason we feel what we feel, see what we see and want what we want. People who are closed-minded, subjective and insecure only see the world one way and can only see someone with a greater perspective or more brightness as a threat, a threat to their ego and their insecurities, their narratives a threat to their false identity. When all the enlightened and more mature want to do with the rest of their time in the current iteration is free others from those shallow subjective points of view. Heaven isn't a place, it's a perspective, and one that can only be achieved with understanding of one's reflection. Not kneeling to pressure or selfish subjective wants, the opposite, the physical, emotional, and psychological choice to make a positive ripple with every step on the path towards a greater perspective of brightness. Inner strength is greater than outer strength. Inner voice is greater than outer voice. Insight is greater than outer sight. And integrity is greater than peer pressure. Do 
you have the courage to swim against the current? Do you have the courage to re-examine your past through the lens of a brighter perspective? How much have you grown since, insert year here? Have you received the return on your investment that the older generations promised if you did what you were told? How much has changed in your life? How happy are you compared to then? Do you still surround yourself with the same kinds of people and do the same kinds of things? You feel like you're facing the right direction. Is that answer subjective? An epiphany or revelation can be the scariest, most uncomfortable experience of consciousness, but it can be the most rewarding with positive ripples that could transcend and affect time and space. So best of luck having girls. I love you and see you there when you're ready to shed that outdated point of view of the world. Let go of that fading shadow of your former self. Bye.